Welcome to my channel, where we discuss everything and all things politics, especially about the 2023 presidential election in Nigeria. In this video, I want to discuss another big lie against Peter Obi, the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, and uh, the man that is challenging the election or declaration of Aswad Bola as the winner of the 2023 presidential election in Nigeria. There were reports that were circulating in the media that Peter Obi said that uh, he is now looking forward to 2027, that he will be president in 2027. Now, the people that started this apparently want to see a closure on the 2023 election. But there will be no closure until the Supreme Court rules on who is truly the winner of the 2023 presidential election in Nigeria. So they fabricated a story that Peter Obi said that he will be president in 2027. A sort of putting a, a foreclosure to him becoming president in 2023. Uh, you know that the key demand of Peter Obi and the Labour Party is that he won the election and that he won to be declared the winner of the election. So some people concocted a story that literally means that he had no, he no longer believed that he can be president in 2023. Now this prompted uh, the Labour Party to react, and rightly so, uh, because you know that Peter B is the person that has suffered so much against propaganda and lies by mainstream media in Nigeria. Uh, because the mainstream media in Nigeria are literally in the pockets of Nigerian politicians who know how to, you know, bribe their way and destroy any institution that could pose a threat to their sinister motives. But uh, thank God for the social media. There's a limit to the what, how far these corrupt politicians can dominate the media in Nigeria. Okay? Good enough. The, the Labour Party reacted to clarify the to clear the air. Because if not, a lot of people have already have started running with it on social media everywhere. It was a celebratory mood for those who believe that the country should move on despite all the anomalies that characterize the 2023 presidential election in particular. So in a statement uh, that was issued uh, by the spokesperson of Obidati campaign, Yunus Satanko, he pointed out that this is the highest level of yellow journalism taking too far all in a bid to change the narrative as there was no time. His Excellency Peter will be granted such a, a noble loss interview to Arise Television because the papers were quoting Arise Television. Peter Obi was outside the country at the time. He just came in. So it was a, fa a fabrication. But it had, this is what Peter Obi had been suffering ever since he declared interest to be the president of Nigeria under the platform of the Labour Party. He has suffered a lot of 
media fabrication. Now, one of the papers uh, that reacted, that published uh, the, re the retraction or the uh, denial by Labour Party was uh, the Guardian newspaper. But if you read the Guardian newspaper that, they, that, that reported this, in their background of the story, after writing about what uh, Yunus Atanko said, now the, the next thing they did was to background their story. And to background their story, look at what they talk about. They say, they say you know, first of all, they say, we'll be at the Labour Party and the court challenge the result of the 2023 election that produced Tinubu as president. Tinubu and Vice President Kashim Shetima presented evidence to support their claim that Obi is not a registered member of the Labour Party. Are you getting it? That was the background of the story the Guardian gave. gave. They didn't background the fact that if they want to report background what happened in the courts, they ought to have talked about the fact that it's not talking about that Obi is not a member of the Labour Party, a matter that had already been thrashed out by the Court of Appeal. They ought to have talked about the fact that even that Anek and Tinubu were came to defend their 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 mandate with only one witness and close the case. But they will not report that. You, you will see many of the mainstream media will not report that. So many things that happened in the court. That was how an international observer was fed up with Nigerian media. Because the way they were an international observer that came to monitor the court proceedings at the election petition tribunal. He, he, is, is, he dismissed Nigerian media because of their cowardice in reporting what was going on in the courts. But for the social media, Nigerians would be in the dark, total darkness of what happened in the court. It would have just the whole situation would have played into the hands of the APC and the government of the day because the same people that didn't want the transmission of the court proceedings live would have blacked out the serious evidences that brought that was brought against Aswan Bola and including his forfeiture matter including his uh, not getting 25 percent in Abuja including his uh, uh, his discrepancies in his certificate both NYSC and uh, degree and what have you so the social media and thank God for the social media Nigerians would have been denied the opportunity of knowing what happened in the court because there is a total misinformation going on to deceive Nigerians not to pay attention to that. And they all are part of the propaganda against Peter Obi. Don't forget, we are in this country when uh, some people in APC claimed that Obi was denied, was uh, detained in London. And that it was the 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 chairman of uh, Nigerian Diaspora Commission, Abike Dabre, that built him, that built him out, and it was a lie. They were sharing the pictures all over the place, a picture that was photoshopped. That was how desperate misinformation against Peter B had become in recent time. So I expect that Nigerians should expect more, but they should also know that anything they see, they should wait for P2B side of the story. They should not rely on what the media, especially the mainstream media in Nigeria, whatever they are churning out. You have to fact check it. 
to be sure before you begin to condemn Peter Obi. Fact check it. Not just because of Peter Obi. Any other information that you have in it. Good enough. Technology has put power in the hands of Nigerians to be able to express themselves. I remember in those days when we were growing up, if you if you write a letter to the editor and your letter is published, you begin you will be in a celebratory mood. You will find the paper that published it. For years you keep it where it will be preserved because it, you are you have a privilege of being heard. But today, technology has put in the hands of Nigerians, in their pockets, in their handbags, technology that they can express themselves and put an end to the dominance of the mainstream media that had not helped Nigeria in fighting corruption and in good governance. Because if the media had been out to fight corruption, to fight for good governance, the tolerance, how many editorials were, were written in condemnation of the reading that characterized the, the 2023 presidential election? You can count it at the tips of your fingers. So these have become a pattern. Somebody has to find something against Peter Obi and write so that to demarcate him, to bring him to disrepute. Because right now in Nigerian politics, there is no politician that has integrity like Peter Obi. No single politician that contested for president in 2023 that has integrity like Peter Obi, that Nigerians trusted like Peter Obi. The other day I was laughing when I saw reports by Bishop Kuka and Fabi Falana that Tinubu should fight corruption. Did Tinubu tell you that he will fight corruption when he was campaigning? Can you show us clips at the campaign stands? Because the man refused to appear in any debate, so you can't even begin to talk about whether he said anything about or against corruption in the debate. But let us, in all the campaign stopovers, can we see a clip, a small clip, one second clip, where Tinubu promised to fight corruption? So it's out now that he has been put there in an election that already he, the European Union observers and in fact the generality of Nigerians believe was 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 not properly conducted. That's when you expect him to come and fight corruption for you. Anybody who believes that must be living in fool's paradise. So these are the, the kind of situation we find ourselves. People expecting planting yam and go about hoping to harvest cassava. You are, you are just wasting your time. You can't uh, uh, support Tinubu and you expect him to come and fight corruption for you. It means you are not serious. So th there was all this kind of propaganda against Peter Obi. always finding something to demonize him, to discredit him, because what can you say against Peter Obi? You hardly have anything tangible you can say. He served impeccably. He is the only one that was not collecting pension. He is the only one that has opportunity to acquire land as a governor. He rejected even the ones that was given to him officially. His integrity is intact. 
Even the, as the, at the tribunal right now, he's the only candidate, the only person in the tribunal now that nobody can accuse. In fact, nobody will lay, believe that he will bribe anybody to get a positive ruling. But he's putting his trust in the judicial. But others who are dismissing that nothing else will come out of this are those who believe that some people have, have so much money that they can buy up the judicial. That the judiciary is already on, in their pocket. So Peter B, because of his integrity, they are always looking for something to demonize him, something to bring as a wedge between him and Nigerian people. And that allegation that he has given up on 2023 presidential election, that lie fabricated is part of it. And it's no different from what they have been doing. For example, you remember the so-called uh, the, the, the leak audio conversation that was doctored between uh, Peter Obi and uh, uh, the founder of Winners Chapel, Bishop Oyedeko. Now, this was things, these are propaganda they are doing even after the election. Why are they consistently doing this after the election? Because they want to bring P2P to, to this report, to bring suspicion, so that even the judiciary will, will look at him in a different perspective. Nigerian public will look at him in a different perspective because they know he stands a good chance of reclaiming his mandate. So they have been persistent after the election to be demonizing him. The leak audio, they said that P2B has said that it was a, that the election was a, a religious war. And everybody began, a lot of people began to talk about it. That it was a, that P2B, uh, they know it, he has been going from church to church, he do this and that. Was, was going to church, he was doing this, he was using religion. And you ask yourself, these same people that are accusing Peter of using religion, which Obi never did, because Obi was the only presidential candidate that was clear, there was clarity of thought about Peter Obi in so many respects. He was the only presidential candidate that said, do not vote for me because I'm from Southeast. Do not vote for me because I'm a Christian. He's the only presidential candidate that this said things like this. Vote for me because I have the capacity, I have the ability, I have the, 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 the drive, the will to turn Nigeria around. He was the only one. Unlike his opponent, Atiku Abaka, that was in Kaduna to say that he was the turn of the north. And unlike Aswadibola Mejidu, who even before he was nominated, was telling the Spring Council for Sharia that they should ensure that a, a Muslim succeeds, succeeds uh, Buhari. He said it in a message in Oshobo before the election, before he was even nominated. And he ran on a Muslim Muslim ticket. Because he believed that he cannot win or get the support of the North without running with a Muslim. Now that is not playing religion. Oh, he is not. He is being sarcastic. He is being. It's a sign of his uh, sagacity. He shows that he understands politics. He is uh, the political juggernaut who knows how to get things done. You know how to win election. But Peter Obi, in a doctored uh, telephone conversation, asked for support of Christians. Support, he said that, asked for support of Christians. That's what was alleged in the doctored report. Okay? 
his own, his, he was playing religion. His, he was playing religion, but as one well, the run of Muslim Muslim today was not playing religion. He was he was he was displaying political sagacity. He was showing that he is the man. He know how to win election. He know how to get things done. But good enough, all their lies was exposed when Erofi. Erofi was speaking with his people after the election, after the governorship election, after everything, after the, after the election. He was boasting how Muslim Muslim tickets that he had done in Kaduna has now been transferred to the national level. And how the ascendancy of Islam cannot be challenged again in Nigeria. And he was already calling the Christian Association of Nigeria so that they have made them like literally a laughing stock. They can't talk now. He even mentioned Peter Obi. So now that one we have put him in a, his place. He talk about so many things. About how he has used religion to dominate certain Kaduna people or Christians to make sure that they never and they will never get a position, even the big governor, they will never get uh, some strategic ministerial positions. But did you see any condemnation of him playing religion? Did Reno Mokri say anything about that video? Did Festus Kiyamo say anything about that video? Did Pastor Poju say anything about that video? Did Pastor Adefarasi say anything about that video? They didn't say anything about it. I was waiting for their reaction to this day I didn't see about the video of Erofi laying it bare for the world to know the agenda. And despite the outcry by people who felt offended by that video, did 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 they require border to clarify anything about our video? Several weeks did he bother? He don't have to bother because that is a display of arrogance of power that we are already on top. What can you do? Yet, people like that who are well recorded seen to promote religious division in the country are not demonized. It is Peter Obi that is playing religion. He's the one that he goes to church programs. But as what we have never seen him in mosque until he began to contest this election. Please, if you see any backdated picture of Aswadi Bola Metinuba attending mosque before he began to contest for this presidency, that he eventually Anek declared him as the winner in controversial circumstances that have been challenging courts. You can put it, show me, and the world. Let us share it. But he's not playing religion. He's, pl he's playing political smartness. Because in Nigeria, people outrage is based on their own personal interests, ethnic and religious. There is no universality in their outrage, in their condemnations of what is bad. Peter Obi is playing religion, but Tinubu is not playing religion, but he ran on a Muslim Muslim ticket. That's not playing religion. He's playing political smartness. So the they package all this kind of propaganda against B2B. But I, I'm happy that Nigerians are smarter than them. Because even in the, the election, even uh, Aerofada was boasting that they won the election. Why did they have to allegedly rig the election? 
if they are so sure they will win. Why were there why were there so much inconsistencies in the calculation of the of the results that led to as what you imagine to the level that you can see the report of the European Union? How they rated INEC in his uh, uh, reports, in his uh, uh, handling of the election and the, the, the results they use in announcing to do about others as we announce the election. You, they cannot be independently verified. So it's, 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 it's neither here nor there. But P2B was demonized because of that leaked audio, doctor leaked audio. But this one that is RFI, he never denies it. It wasn't doctored, it, it, it was raw. He didn't bother to clarify anything. And those who believe that it is their duty to always bring out, call out P2B, they were mooted. But Erufai didn't bother. The Erufai, after several weeks after, several weeks after, it was in Ju this July that Erufai now began to talk talked about it. And he didn't talk about it directly. He was talking about the reason why he made up his mind that he would not have a Christian running mate. He didn't address the core issues he made, he raised in the leaked video where he was claiming that uh, Christians in Satan cardinal will never occupy any position and Christian, a Christian cannot be uh, is cannot be president of Nigeria and all kinds of things based on the kind of uh, arrangements the thing that this Muslim Muslim ticket has uh, brought into the Nigerian political space Asari Dokubo, all of them in fact Asari Dokubo was even praising him for that video People like uh, Reno Mokre, he didn't see it. Had he been, it was Peter B that said a thing like that. The whole social media and print media, he will be, Reno Mokre will be talking about it, then the national newspaper will be amplifying it every day. Now, talking about the audio leak. of Peter B, the doctor of the league. In a decent society, the, 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 that audio leak and the stealing of, alleged stealing of identity of Peter B ought to have been an issue of national discourse. How did this happen? Who did it? Because it's only the state that has the capacity to be able to intercept conversations and then doctor it as he wants. But nobody did anything about it. It has already been forgotten and many people have moved on. As I'm talking about it now, it's just a reminder to Nigerians on series of lies, propaganda against Peter Obi. Even weeks, months after the election. But it's, it's, there's an interesting uh, story, exclusive story by Sahara reporters that get me thinking. The, the exclusive report by Sahara reporters titled How Director General of Nigeria's Secret Police, DSS, helped Tinubu get hackers to assess WhatsApp messages of opponents during, after presidential election. Now, if this kind of information were to come out 
in America, in United Kingdom. That will be a major issue of discourse and investigation by the US Congress, by the Parliament in Britain. But Nigerian National Assembly are not bothered about things like that. They don't want to talk about it. Because this is a serious allegation. But of course, the, the DSS in a statement has denied this uh, Sahara reporter story. They have denied it. They say it's not true. That's what they said. But I'm leaving you in this video with a quote by the powerful German leader, Otto von Bismarck, who said, never believe anything until it is officially denied. God bless you. And if you are new to my channel, you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel. Hit the subscription button, hit the notification bell. When you subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell, anytime I have a new video, you'll be among the first to know. And please don't forget to like this video because when you like it, Google will rank it high and recommend it for more people. Thank you and God bless you and yours.